Hey guys, this is Pat from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Today I'm going to be replacing the uh, hydraulic fluid in my Case 580 Super E backhoe. This particular backhoe takes uh, about 12 gallons of hydraulic fluid to fill the reservoir. And I got a new filter for it. And the new filter, if anybody's interested, again this is a 1987 Case Super E or SE uh, backhoe extend a hoe and the filter number for this as far as the equipment manual is concerned on page 325 item 18 is number 122362 I can put that in the description box below if anybody's interested in what to use on this machine manual also calls for a transmission hydraulic fluid, a case, a uh, special case uh, hydraulic fluid, but doing some research um, in the hydraulic portion of the machine you can actually just use AW46 transmission or hydraulic fluid in, in, the, uh, in the hydraulic system, but you want to make sure that you put that special oil in the uh, shuttle of the, of the tractor. Um, they have the special oil where you can intermix the two so you don't get confused but uh, hydraulic oil is cheaper than this particular oil that I'm talking about. So what I have here is a, a fleet guard and the part number for that is HF6555 and I believe I got that on Amazon. Um, if not, I think it was eBay because I ordered some seal kits for the tractor as well because I have a few seals that are bleeding. Um, and I'll put a video out on those when the time is right. We have on the tractor here a funnel that fits in the reservoir. The reservoir on the tractor is located right behind me inside this and I have my lovely assistant Ryan here to help me. <laughs> I have three five gallon buckets of AW46 mobile hydraulic fluid. I have three buckets for waste to catch the waste that comes out from the bottom or the the old oil. So I'll go ahead and take you around the sh machine here and show you uh, the points of interest when it comes to what we need to do. So we have Ryan, my son, he is removing the uh, the cover for the engine compartment and this is on the right hand side of the machine and to access the hydraulic oil filter um, is right here on the left hand side as you're facing the machine itself it's on the same side as the oil filter the fuel filters are on the other side of the machine or on the left hand side of the machine so we could see where everything was at. I went ahead and removed the cover for the control valves for the front bucket. This particular machine does not have a clam bucket, so it's just the two function, as you can see, for the for the uh, curl and raise functions on the machine. So just below that is the drain for the machine. And again, that's on the right-hand side of the machine. The filter is on the right-hand side of the machine. Basically, what we have to do is loosen up that nut. Ryan is going to get some tools to uh, loosen that, and we'll find out how, what size that is. It looks like maybe inch and an eighth, maybe, bud? That's what I grabbed, but I brought a crescent just in case. Oh, an adjustable metric. Look at you. About You're the that. man. Okay. So I don't know if we're going to need a breaker bar for that or not, but uh, we're going to go ahead and give this a whirl. We're going to get our waste buckets all ready to go here. I was just about ready to go get Ryan a cheater bar, but uh, those young ambitious muscles just pulled that right off of there. Okay, while Ryan's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get the old filter removed. And I just have the simple band type uh, filter wrench that I'm going to use on this particular filter. 
Okay, this particular wrench is one way you can put that on, and that's this way to loosen, and you got to flip it over to tighten it. So when you put apply pressure to the wrench, it tightens up against the uh, body of the filter or filter cartridge, and you just well, I got to do it. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> you got to go counterclockwise to pull it off. If you guys are interested, this is a CarQuest 85495. That also fits on the Case 580E. And that's full of, full of hydraulic oil, so we need to dump that in the waste bucket as well. Anytime I open up a new bucket or an old bucket, I always want to make sure that there's dust free on top. And uh, these here I just got from the warehouse the other day. And I just wipe down the top, make sure that there's no, nothing, no impurities that are actually going to get in to the, uh, the tank after we change the oil here. You got these two little tabs here you just pull up on that unscrew it and then there's another little seal that's actually inside of that if you guys haven't fooled with this before some of it might be pretty redundant to you but uh, I just want to be thorough just in case somebody hasn't done this before there's also a little breather cap right here you want to pull that open and you want to puncture that so by puncturing a hole in this little area right here it allows air to go in and the fluid to come out and so you're going to have even flow coming out of here instead of the glugging or lack of a better term um, that's going to be happening if you don't have a place for air to come back in other than the pour spout so i just poke a little hole in here so air can get in now while the oil is draining finishing to drain out of the uh reservoir over there. I'll go ahead and put that filter on while Ryan's taking care of that. And all your filters are going to have an O-ring right here. And the manufacturer uh, always recommends that you put just a little bit of oil, um, whether it's a car or anything or a truck, uh, just apply just a little bit of the oil that you're going to be working with around that seal so when the seal, uh, when you spin that seal on to the piece of equipment, then the rubber won't bind or want to walk out of the uh, the track that it's in. So I just tilt that ahead a little bit, get a little oil on my fingers, run it around there, lube that up good. So you screw that on hand tight. And I just give them maybe another quarter turn. And then I'll put a time stamp on the side of the filter just to let me know how far along I go without changing it the next time. 10, 13, 18. So 10, 13, 18 is when I change the filter. And so 10 years down the road, I'll know exactly how, long, how uh, past due that I am. <laughs> so here we are. Nine years past mm -hmm. ten years? Yeah. Think you're ready to put the cap back on? Okay, bud, I think so. This is down to a drip. Yes. I don't think you're going to get any much more out of that, so let's go ahead and do that and we'll get us all set up to pour oil in this bad boy. You want the six foot ladder out here, Ryan? Would it be easier? No. Would you expect me to climb up on this? Well, yeah, sure. You didn't want to put any tape or anything like that on that, did you? Uh-uh. <laughs> I just got out of a parade, so... It was a trucker parade, though, so that's why I have my suspenders on. Tape. Oh, yeah, you had to look the part, huh? These are more of my normal... Those are your going-to-town pants, so I think. Those are my weekend clothes. Those are your going, apartment wear. Going to work. Those are going-to-town pants, ain't they? It's not very good here. Extremely poor traction with hydraulic oil. Now we're showing you what not to do, people. What do you mean? 
climbing around on equipment with uh, oil on your feet. I drill, yeah, that's gonna happen. <laughs> Adapt. And Adapt overcome. and overcome. And don't fall on your butt. And parts will roll back up. Okay, we got the funnel down here. I always make sure that the funnels are clean and wiped out. It isn't flowing out of that bottom, is it? Uh -uh. It isn't overflowing out of the cap? Nope. Okay. Looks like you know what you're doing, man. Or in a bucket. So while he's doing that, I wanted to point out a couple of things. And one thing to be a little bit cleaner, I've always got sawdust around here, so that makes a real good absorbent. But uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll also put down a big piece of cardboard from a, a shipping box or something like that that we might get. And I just simply forgot to do that this time. Uh, makes it a little bit cleaner. But uh, we're going to sweep sawdust around here, and that really does a good job in cleaning up uh, any oils that you might have. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is, you know, the manual tells you to also uh, run the machine and warm up the oil to 125 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And you do, you want to make sure that the, if you have a backhoe attachment on your machine, um, and that might sound a little bit odd to some folks, but this machine here has a three-point hitch, and you can actually put different implements on the machine. Uh, but if you have a backhoe attachment, uh, you can see right there where it uncouples. But um, you want to have the, the backhoe portion in the transport position and that's with the uh, boom all the way up and cradled on this pin here so this is the transport position if your machine was cold what you do is you start it up and you run it on full and then you run the uh, run the function the tilt back function on the bucket you tilt it back you hold that in place with the machine running at full throttle I believe it's for 15 seconds and then return to neutral for 30 seconds and keep repeating until the oil gets to 125 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit you always want to check the oil and transport and uh, the bucket bottom level and on the ground as you can see it with this machine right here so uh, hopefully we're doing it right but uh, if anybody has any tricks to the trade I know Ryan he says that when he's at work uh, whenever they check the level for their equipment they always extend out the uh, boom on their excavators and also on their backhoes and such they extend out the boom on the back and they curl the bucket in. That Here might be just for newer equipment or something too. I know for every excavator that I've ever been in, that's the way it is. You just extend the boom out all the way. I don't know about for an extend a hoe. Uh huh. But yeah, that's the way you do it. Well, look what Ryan's doing here. He's not. He hasn't punctured the uh, small opening on the opposite side of the pour, and he's turned it up like that, and so that seems to be working pretty good. It looks to me like you have a little more control over your pour too, don't you? You do, and the benefit to doing this is all your air stays up here, so you don't get that that glugging or the the chugging, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure glugging is a technical term. I know that's what you said earlier, so I just want to <laughs> keep that going. I think most people understand what we're trying to say anyway. <laughs> and then once you get it that low, you can turn it the other way. And now all your air is down below, you know, that quarter mark of the bucket. Because mm -hmm. some buckets to the tops don't have an uh, air flow plug up there. Right. So that well. was taught to be by an actual mechanic that's around here. So. Well. 
Well, you've uh, taught me something then. I even taught my boss that one. He didn't know about that. Ooh, either. kudos for you, buddy. All right, so we're going to need uh, probably about half of this other bucket here to get our 12 in there. Yeah. And I won't poke any holes in it. So now you guys know two ways of doing it. The right way and the wrong way, and I'm not going to say who did it the right way, but... Uh, as long as you don't make a mess, it's the right <laughs> way. Well, I'm going to go unlock the machine and see if... Uh, get the key in it. I'm not might have start. about two gallons in there now. That's where it was. Okay, right there? Yeah, right about Well, that's right enough. It operating t operating is between the lower part of this hash, hash mark to the top half of the hash mark, so anywhere in between there is a safe operating. You want to so, put another gallon or two in there? Um, let's just go ahead and run it, Ryan, and see what okay. happens here. up the machine and operating the dump function on the front loader bucket in the down position for 15 seconds and just returning returning the not, uh, handle operating handle down to the neutral returning it to the neutral position and then going back and checking just the uh, I don't have a thermometer to check to see if that's 125 but that's about that's normal operating temperature right there uh, it's getting nice and warm so um, that's all functioning properly now Ryan is up there he's checking the fluid level so far it's right at the bottom we might have to let it sit for a minute okay sounds good all right guys we've uh, ran the machine a little bit uh, let it cool down let the uh, oil settle down a little bit uh, we've added some more to it and to where it's uh, on the full side of the hash marks on his uh, dipstick there and so we're ready to go we got a new filter got new oil and uh, we're ready to go on that end so well I hope this uh, video helps some folks out and um, we appreciate you stopping by so take care and God bless <laughs>